DSC is a product that was developed out of the algorithms that we picked up from motorsport, from racing. So what we've done is we've combined a lot of our knowledge from building damper, finding the curves that are necessary to get, keep the tire in contact with the uh, racetrack, with the race surface. And so what we've done is we found out what high speed, low speed curves we're looking for, but we also wanted to do that with the digital, with the digital footprint in mind because now there's electronic dampers and with the speed of these dampers we're able to do in motorsport what you couldn't do before. So what we'll do is we'll kind of demonstrate that if the car is kind of in a neutral state, okay. you've got we got a dyno shock running on the dyno okay. and uh, this is the right here you're seeing a dyno curve and this is the force velocity is that right here. Yeah, and exactly. And if you you go ahead and step in there and uh, bring up the mile an hour, oh, you're already, once you get some mile an hour going, right. Now, after you're going a mile an hour, if you were to go into the braking, okay. just try braking. All right, so just breaking, a quick yeah. brake, quick braking. All right, you can see that you're putting some nose into the shock. Right, So what down. that's doing, right, because before the car reacts, before the car rotates, Okay, because when you go from zero to 60 bar, the nose hasn't quite come down yet. It follows right at that moment, but the right. damper is going to react and hold the car up so you can lean hard. If you're on a right hand corner, you might want a lot of dampener in the left front right. so you can really lean the whole car on the left front footprint. And that allows that to do that. Then once you're in there, okay. once you're into the corner, let's say you've initiated the braking and you've, you've got a set into the car, okay. then you may have a G sensor come in. See, this is the little Porsche so car. It's yeah. leaning over. It's leaning over and the damper is resisting the forces. So the car is alive. And then if the car you're at Sebring and you've come out of 16 and you're going down the back straight, it's nice and smooth and you got that glassy ride and you're, <laughs> you're going right down into the wall. So right as you get into the brake pedal, if you got enough speed, yeah, okay. go ahead and initiate some brake. You, well, we got so much. Clear it once for me, Rob. Okay, yeah. again. Okay, you right. go ahead and initiate the brake into the wall. Bang! And then, boom, right away, at you're... At the same time. At the same time now, granted on Sebring, you may want the rebound range to remain a little high on the way in. Understood. And maybe on the way out of the corner, when the wheel's open, you're trying to get under the bridge, on the way out, you may want to soften the nose. Of the, so you can get a lot of grip out of the tire and not have it turn over. Yeah. And you, because you never want it loose, you just want to be down onto the power and get out of there. Power so down. the electronic shock allows you to have all that range of valving. You can adjust it. We have a different template for okay. each one of the uh, each one of the inputs. Steering, cell brake, all these. And one thing that we haven't really touched on is velocity. Okay. Because, and this is where our new controller the DSC with velocity control. It's a new board. And what allows you to do, we're trying to run this on our race car okay. this year, and this will be like kind of the key point, is we have now velocity control, and it's on this damper. Okay. And we're gonna have four rocker switches on four corner of the car. So the car always knows the velocity, the wheel movement, and knows where the travel, where, okay. the, where the car is from the G sensor. So it knows heave, pitch, roll. It knows all the dynamic and we can dial that in, we can tune that into the characteristic to the point where you can even, let's say you wanted to not put too much sway bar in the back, but you wanted to put a knee, a shock in it to hold the car up on the way in. Understood. You can do that with the velocity control. So you're just anticipating like all of the way the, the car is moving. Yeah. Unbelievable. Yeah, because you could have it, let's say at low speed, but not high speed, just because you're getting into like, like Sebring, like sometimes you go into turn one and there's some spots there where you don't get a, like that long sweeper. There's areas where you want enough support in the back, okay. but not to hurt the exit of the corner. Of understeer you, or something like yeah, that. Yeah, and oversteer out of the corner. Absolutely. A, yeah, you put too much rear bar in, you hold the car up nicely in the front end of the corner, but then by the rear end of the corner, the car gets loose on the exit, and that's no good either. Not a good time. So the damper can tune itself into it. Velocity, and I think you can that's see it. that, that up here. Okay. No, I'm gonna go ahead and if I can find the cursor, there it is. So I'm gonna go into the velocity table and we're working with the right front damper, it just happens to be. And what I'll do is I'll put a little bit of 
low speed in. So I'm at two inch per second. And I'll go ahead and I'll put in minus 20%. What are you at, six inch per second? Sounds like it. Hey, Doug. Low speed to hold the car up. Okay. You'd, the engineer would build that into the template, so that's what I'm doing now. And I'll just write that to the program. I'm programming the car. There's no more turning the knobs. And I'll just... Yeah, if you were to, or even rotate the car a little bit. Yeah, go for it. Put a little G load in, like you're, like you're in 17. Now. Turn it a little bit. Clear it a little bit, Rob. Uh, the low speed knee isn't. Might be a technical difficulty for. There's the nose up there holding the car up. Okay. So now you've got low speed introduced, holding the car up into the corner. And if you were to... When you say it's... In the, the, um, a lot of it's taken from the motorcycle technology. Okay. And uh, it's a 43 millimeter tube. You can't bend this in a sports car. <laughs> the clearance on the guide is okay. probably more accurate than any other available and there's no stiction. It's the lowest stiction of any ma shock manufacturer. Okay, and stiction means, like just the term stiction means? The forces between the seal and, and the pressure and the amount. When you see stiction, it shows up on the dynograph okay. as a hysteresis. Okay. This is time that you're waiting on the sports car to, to, to react. To do, like, come on, do his thing, and then it finally gets there. Yeah, and what happens is you'll see that change from shock to shock. You'll actually the inputs will occur just mega differences in time. Right. But those time is there, and that'll start adding up to hundreds and can even get into a t you know tenths wow. in places because you're waiting. Yeah. And depending on what your nitrogen pressure was, but the damper technology like this is such that uh, there's minimal to no hysteresis. Uh, the valving range is as dynamic as any of your race damper. Okay, I mean, compression. And yeah, you got your low speed, high speed. Yeah. Plus, it's fully electronically mapped at the same time. So this a damper like this would be for professional. This would be what's going to be used in like an R car, a GT3 wow. R would have it would because you would get the best of all. Imagine if you were it's starting to sprinkle and you're like, man, it's going to go rain, and they're all screaming like, you know, you know, don't be the first guy to get caught up. We right. got to keep you out. Stay out. Stay good. You're trying to stay hot enough to keep the higher tires hot. It's sprinkling. If you had either your wiper switch or a rain sensor, as it's sprinkling, your curve's changing. Unbelievable. Your curve's changing. You would have such an advantage because the other guys are on full race dampers. They've got to come in, make all their setting changes right. for rain. As soon as you either A, turn on your wipers from the can command, or B, it's C, sprinkled, depending on the severity, Absolutely. your car's being tuned for rain. On Even the spot. On the spot, man. You're like, whoa. <laughs> it's like, man, I got grip, boys. But then you've got to realize you're still on dries and you got to get it in. Right, exactly. You know? But at least you can manage the next lap right. or so. But the same on the reins, you know, as your reins are going off and you get into the dry condition, okay. it can work for you there. Go the other way. Okay. Yeah, because you know how it is. You get into a rain condition. You've got the rain tire just to that perfect temp. The right. car's working. You feel so good with it. Either the rain changes a little bit or maybe the, the, the field goes to a caution and you got to cool down that rain tire and you can't quite get back into it, the uh, electronics will make it so that you go to it quicker. So that gives you more advantage in the field. Cars, like differently in corners or yeah. whatever. To yeah. Well, yeah. Unbelievable. Yeah, so it's got a lot of uh, implication in the racing world. Yeah, we wish, wish all the best on this project. This